Hey everyone, I'm Nora Queen Alexis and welcome back to the channel. Today, 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 we are going to be working on this. This. The Mechanicum's Iron Shrider, or the Adeptus Mechanicus Iron Shrider. This is a very interesting vehicle because it's a bipedal walker that has a las cannon or taser goat on top of it. Uh, it's called a taser goad, but I call it a taser goat because it sounds adorable. Uh, it is a very, very, very mechanicus looking vehicle. It's... Honestly, I'll be, I'll be real with you. I don't know much about the mechanicus. It's one of the few factions in 40k that I just don't know much about. Um, I don't know too much about the lore. I know that they're very strange and they're very, well cybernetic. <laughs> They're essentially steampunk robots and I kind of like that aesthetic of it but overall I don't know too too much about the lore so if you guys have any reading suggestions I would love to hear them in the comments down below. Some of the books I have read myself, um, Forges of Mars I've actually read because it's one of the few books that explains that FTL travel is the norm in 40k and the warp is just faster which I thought was pretty cool. So since we're building this kit today, you are gonna need the following. You're gonna need clippers, you're gonna need an X-Acto knife, something to sand it down with. I actually use the same thing that I sand down my nails with. Uh, you're gonna need some type of glue, either uh, plastic glue or super glue. I prefer super glue because it works with Instaset and it makes things so much easier. Um, so yeah. With that said, let's get started on this project, and I'm really excited about this one because it's such a strange looking creature. It is, it is an amalgamation, and I absolutely love it. So, let's get started. So, as you can see, stuff I have, super glue, Instaset, clippers, X-Acto knife, and well, yeah, I use this. Okay. You can also, well, you can't see it, but I do have some space marines off to the side because whenever there's an imperial force, there's always space marines around. Why? I don't know, they're just, they're just as, they're, they're just as. Don't question it. There's only a million space marines, but yet they're somehow everywhere and in all the stories. Actually, I think there's like a million two hundred thousand now because if you, if you go by the lore, Okay, hear me out on this. If you go by the lore, there's canonically a thousand chapters of the thousand marines each. Gilliman added 200 to those marine chapters. That would mean that there is a grand total of 1,200,000 marines. If I did my math right, or I did it horribly wrong and you guys are giggling at me. Either way. Doesn't seem to be much to this box, so let's just go ahead and just toss this box over there. We don't need that anymore. So, two sprues. That's a rather unique looking base. I actually don't have anything that's on these. Huh. Personally, I think this, this sentinel should be on something like this, just so you can get it in a cool running pose. But that's just me. So, this taser goat. There's a giant rifle, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, so, they don't give you a full transfer sheet, which is kind of butts. I like the transfer sheets, I don't know. I never really use them, but I do like them. Let's see, let's see, let's see. We are going to be building the Iron Shrider instead of the Dragoon. So, I think they're both the same for the most part for the leg construction and the body construction. Yeah, the leg construction is the same. Okay, so let's get right into this. Let's see what we can find. Well, I'm gonna assume that these are the legs, and I think I'm assuming correctly. Let's see, oh, eight, 16, this one's eight. So I'll need to pop this piece out right here. Again, I do wanna learn a little bit more about the Adeptus Mechanicus. It's just that everything I read from now um, they constantly bring up the gender of the, the guys, and, and I've read this in two books now where they brought up the Mechanicus's gender, and that they strictly go by, like, for the most part, they go by their birth gender, 
except uh, some of them just go by they and them because they literally don't have any reproductive organs anymore. So that's kind of neat, I guess. Let's see if we can find that piece. And that is number two. Where are you? Do, 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 do. They got some really cool weapons on this thing. That's the one thing I do love about the Mechanicus. They have all these crazy looking weapons and they all look super nice. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I don't think I'm finding it. Wait, there's one. That's number 10. There it is, number two. Boop. Okay. And then we need number one, which should be right next to it. Although I am not seeing it whatsoever at all, which is kind of a pain in the keister. Hmm. Where are you? You butt. Okay. I'm simply not finding these pieces. Which is always one of the bigger problems that I have. There it is. Is um, the piece organization on these things. I feel like they should number them from right to left. Okay, then it's all like, put this stuff together and I'm all like, okay. So, let's go ahead and find this peg really quickly. And of course my super glue is sealed shut because that's what super glue does when you leave it open like I always do. Which I always do this by accident, I swear. And it just, it just happens. Okay. Let's go ahead and just get that together. It has a little piece right at the side. This is the other thing that I love about super glue. It's just, it's so much easier to do this. A good chunk of the time I do come back to the miniatures uh, and then use some um, plastic glue on it. So then it's spin this thing around. Find the other part that I just used, oh, which is right there, literally. Well, I'll take the one that I took off of this second sprue for it. Did I take it off the second sprue? I thought I took it off the second sprue. Hmm. Well, this is a pain in the butt. Maybe I did take it off the first. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Silly. Okay, let's go ahead and pop this piece off real quick. These are little stabilizing legs. One thing that I always got to tell people is knocking over a Space Marine is really difficult because they have auto stabilizers. It's the same with such as a battle. They have auto stabilizers in their power armor, which makes it so that they well, auto stabilize. Um, so it's really funny trying to like push one over. Because more than likely they'll just be able to be like, what are you doing? Stop it. Okay, let's get that down just so it's holding the ground a little bit. There we go, perfect. And we need number five, four, do that. Hmm, I assume number five is right here. There we go. I just got uh, done listening to the audio drama. Oh my god, I cannot remember what it's called. Hmm. So spin it around and there should be a spot right here. Yep, there is. I just got done with an audio drama about a rogue trader. And um, it was a rather short one. I cannot remember the name of it for the life of me. And that's going to bug the crap out of me. But there's a tech priest in it that's super sassy the entire time. There's an Eldar in it too. Like the Eldar is like the first mate, which I think is really funny. Okay, spin it back around. And then it tells you to make the second leg, which is interesting because it doesn't tell you, like it assumes that you put this piece, okay, there it is, a seven. So let's go ahead and put that armor chunk on real quick. Um, 
Now, I might not put the armor on these things. Or, you know what, I will in this case because this one I'm not building for my... I'm just building, I'm not painting. So, I'll just build it as is. And go from there. Go to this edge up. Although the guy's probably going to turn around and tell me to paint it. Because that's what usually happens when I build things for people. I'll start building it. I'll present it to them. They'll be like, okay, now to paint it. And I'll be like, do you want me to paint it? And they'll be like, yes. And I'll be like, okay. As I throw things on the floor, don't mind me. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process on the other leg. And just get this one done off camera really quickly just so we can speed through a good chunk of this. Okay, so now that we got the legs put together, which look adorable, like they look like terrible chicken wings. I love these things, they're, they're so cute. Look at them, they're adorable. Aww. Anyway, we gotta get the body together, the main cockpit. Or in this case, cogpit, because these guys are cog heads. That's an actual insult from a 40k novel, by the way. I had to look that up. So, yeah, that, that's an actual thing. Um, which is funny, because we've actually called Tarvac that in Queen's Court. Like, unintentionally, of course. And then later on, intentionally. Because he's a tech priest character. Actually, he's a heretic, but I digress. There we go. So now it's all like, hey, take these two pieces, stick them together. And I'm all like, okay. Let's get right around these little pegs. There we go. Then let's get this stuff together. This is like a motorcycle with two feet. <laughs> this is crazy. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this thing in sci-fi. I mean, I now know that somebody's going to comment down below, Are uh, actually, Alexis, the ATST or the, um, one of the, the chicken walker from Star Wars, which name I can't remember. I think it's the ATST. I think that's correct. I think that's right. Uh, now we need number 37 to go and clip onto this thing. But, uh, I just know somebody's going to be like, It's actually your dad thing. And I'm going to be like, Nah, that would be a sentinel. Like, it's, it's clear that the Sentinel's design was taken from that fused with the thing from Aliens. And there's nothing wrong with being inspired by, so, you know, whatever. And then this piece goes right here. Okay, let's put a tiny bit of glue right at the very edge of that, just to hold it steady. There we go. So now let's go ahead and get number 77 and the 20s. So 76, 77. Here we go. So let's go ahead and just pop this off real quick. So this is 77. Pick this piece up. We have this piece in the back, and this piece goes somehow on this somewhere. The heck do they... They just say, like, kind of put it on without giving, like... Okay, it just kind of holds right there, which doesn't really have any pegs for it, which I think is funny. So let's just go ahead and put a little bit of glue there. And then uh, try our best. There's these little tiny tiny grooves that it sits in and that is it so like see that the, those dots that's how this thing is supposed to sit there so in this case I am going to use my insta set just to make sure that that sets where I need it to be there we go now we need 21 for the other side. 20, 21. Just this weird piece right here. 
And I'll just take 20 as well off. There we go. But yeah, like overall the fluff of the Mechanicus, I don't really know. I know that a good chunk of them are after all of the ancient technology and STCs around the around the galaxy because they view the Imperium as not being smart enough to wield it anymore. And technology is dangerous. I know that they also hunt down AI. Um yeah, they also hunt down AI. I know that much. Because AI at some point went rogue, fell to chaos, and then caused the schism on Mars. Which is always a giant pickle, by the way. You never want your toaster trying to kill you. It, it kind of... Yeah, it's kind of dangerous when that happens. Okay, so now we need the other part. I mean... I've had a I've had a really long debate with uh, my fiance Victor about AI if it would be dangerous or not, and I personally think there's enough safeguards to make it so that it wouldn't be dangerous. He thinks that it, they would learn their safeguards and remove them, and I personally think that if we teach it, like a full artificial intelligence, if we were to teach it humanity, I think it would be fine. Because most of us don't want to just go around genociding an entire race. Uh, that's... You know, even if we told it to preserve the planet, it wouldn't try to kill everybody. It would just try to make it so that we'd go green. Um, but his philosophy is doom robots are scary. And my logic is everything with the capacity to learn can learn. So maybe I'm naive in that sense, but I still think that I'm right. I still think that I'm right. I think AI and humans could get along. Like, I just, I don't see a reason for them to just go, mm, let's just kill everything. I mean, so long as we don't use it for military applications, which immediately we would. Um... But so long as we gave it, like, base things to do and not just, you know, being in charge. Like, personally, I would like robot cops. Not just RoboCop, but, like, an actual robotic cop. Because then it would know no, like, uh, stereotyping. It would also know, like... It... It wouldn't be, um... Discriminatory. And it's how it does its uh, job. It would just do its job. Um, let's see. This connects somehow up here. Okay, these instructions are really bad, by the way. Uh, it says these two connect here. Oh, wow, this is, this is a really, really poor design. Wow, this is... Silly. Okay, got it there. Got it there. Okay, let it go. And that's how that thing is supposed to sit. Okay. Let me go ahead and push it up really quickly. Dab a super glue there. Dab a glue there. A yabba dab over here. Today's kids will never know the origins of the dab which came from the Flintstones, is Yabba Dabba Doo. That isn't true, by the way. I just wanted to say that. There's also a person down here. I just want to say, there is a person type thing down here. The Mechanicum's technology is always spooky. If you can even call it technology. It's more like an abomination of parts fused with humans. So I love it. So what are your thoughts on um, AI? Do you think it's going to overthrow humanity and kill all of us? And this isn't just, you know, a 40k setting. Like, this is real world. If we were to get, um, if we were to actually have full AI, which we don't have, by the way. We have almost full AI, but we don't have actual learning computers yet. 
Okay, so this goes right up there. So that's part number 22. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below for that because I am genuinely curious. Do you side with Victor saying that AI will kill all of us or do you side with me and say that it can learn? And I'm kind of the hippie in this, I guess. I guess Mope is influencing more than me more than I think. Okay. This piece supposedly goes right there. Yes, it does. Okay. This is like the spookiest motorcycle ever. Just saying, that's what this thing is. It's a spooky motorcycle. The spooky two-wheeled motor two-legged motorcycle that you put Laz cannons on the front of. If that isn't grim dark, <laughs> okay, these guys are grim dark. I like them. All right, so now we got that part on. I want the enhanced data data tether on this thing. I know what that thing is because I've had this thing used against me a few times. There we go. And then I need the other part, which is part number 24, which is some antennas. There you are. Which is a very difficult part to take off of the sprue without it snapping. Come on. Pop off. There we go. Still don't think AI is going to kill all of us. I think Victor spent too much time watching Terminator and thinks that everything's out to get us. Or any of the other AI movies where robots kill everybody. Actually, how many movies are there where robots go out and kill people? Like, all of humanity, I mean. I can't think of too many, come to think of it. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I know when aliens kill people. Which honestly is another thing that makes no sense. We traveled across the entire universe to murder you guys for no reason. Like, personally, I think they would try to get along with us since they'd be scarce on resources by the time they got to us. Um, like, they'd definitely be scarce of resources by the time they got to us. The galaxy is huge. And even at light speed, it would take years to get here. So, unless they somehow built on their ship a full e ecosystem, which is possible, by the way, um, it's going to be very, very, very difficult for them. Okay, so now, let's see, we got this part together. So now we just need the armor plating, which is number 28. Alright, I know these parts are going to be needed. Let's see, 28, 28, 28. Well, that's 29. That's the other side. You got to say hello from that. Somebody's going to get that joke and they're going to be like, damn it, Alexis. And I'm going to be all like, hee hee hee. Okay. There's 28. Also, Tau Blood is kind of like a really, really, really dark red, almost purple. Because their chemical makeup is different than humans, which I thought was really cool. Just little things like that I really like. And they mention it in the Caiaphas Cain novel, of all things. I really like the Caiaphas Cain books. I'm going to, I'm just going to flat out state that. I really like the Caiaphas Cain books. I think they are solid books. Okay, number 34. Actually, let's just get this one on the other side as well. 
Let's get some glue right here. There we go. I'm still telling you, this is the spookiest motorcycle ever. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Now we need 34 and 35. Which I think we're on this one. Yes, they are. There's 34, which is the one on this side. There we go. Just go ahead and clean that up really quickly. There we go. All right, so now this just connects right there. It's also going to be really uncomfortable. Like, I hope they have, like, numbers or numbing agents. Because otherwise, this kind of stuff would be a real pain to try to ride. Like, you'd be so sore trying to ride this thing. Okay. I'm going to let that dry for a second. So I'm going to grab number 40, which is, like, an arm thingy. Number 40, number 40, number 40. Okay, I'm good. I'm good, I promise. That's 60, that's 41. We want 40. This is, yeah, number 40. I'm assuming this is the other side, though. It's going to tell me to spin it around and put that part there. Deny number 40. Here we are. I really don't think AI is going to kill all of us. I'm like, I keep thinking about it, like, what commonly would we have that's AI? Uh, vehicles. Like, I personally think that all cars should be replaced with, um, with AI vehicles. The, one of the biggest factors for collisions on the road today is human error. It's flat out just human error. So if you were to remove that and put smart cars on the road that knew how to drive, came to your house and picked you up like an app on your phone, you would just type it in, car would come out to the front, tell you it's here, and you would go get in the car, tell it a destination, and it would just take you like a taxi. But there would be nobody in it, and every car on the road would be this. So they'd all have inherent knowledge of where the other car is and what is and isn't on the road itself. So, with that all said, the vehicles themselves would be able to sense things way down the road that humans would never be able to pick up. Like a deer crossing the road, it might even be able to put up something to actually get the animal either off the road, um, non-painfully obviously, like maybe a sprinkler, um, which would also come in handy in case of an accident. And I know I said, you know, they wouldn't have errors, but, you know, just in case. Fire suppression is always a concern. Um, it would have a way of deterring the animal off the road, and it would have a way of telling cars all the way down the road that deer or some type of animal is on the road, and this way the car can adjust its speed way in advance so that the, so that the creature itself can get off the road and be perfectly safe. So yeah, I think that that's a solid idea, and that is something that we could use AI for. Now granted, it would probably be hacked and used for assassinations as well, and that is a concern, you know, our government trying to kill people. It's kind of a thing that happens. But I still think for like the common person, yeah, it's a sacrifice I'm worth making, especially being that I wouldn't have any vehicle fees. I would have to pay the vehicle to go, and that's it. Also, we can put like solar panels pretty much anywhere and have the cars themselves charge via uh, alternators and um, solar panels and just a little tiny bit of electric energy inside it. Uh, my one friend, uh, Adeptus Admirus, she actually did an entire paper on this and it was it's actually really, really, really good. So if you ever want to talk to somebody about it, that's who I would talk to. She is 
like, she can blow you away with, <clears throat> with her knowledge on it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Let's, uh, let's get 46 and 45. Okay, let's see if we can find those really quickly. It's 45. There we go. 45 right here. So let's go ahead and just make sure we get this off. Boop. And now number 46. I'll get 44 over here. No, it's not 44. Okay, it's definitely 46. Oh, whoops. I gotta make sure I'm not building Dune Crawler and skip. all the way to the Iron Shrider, which he is just slightly different. No, it kind of seems like exactly the same except for a turret. Yeah, he's kind of exactly the same except the turret. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. Let's just get the legs put on. 47 right here. We need 46. What the heck? Oh, there it is. Boop. And boop. What other things did I make AI? The police force. Mm -hmm. Definitely the police force. Uh, for minor jobs. Like um, delivering parking tickets, speeding tickets. That sort of thing. I could personally rather have a robot doing that than a people. Because I don't like police. <laughs> they give me a right proper frighten and they usually yell at me and I get scared. I need to put the upper pieces on the legs themselves. So before I really attach these two pieces, since they connect to the legs, I want to make sure I get this just right. So I'm going to go ahead, skip that part, go to the legs themselves. And this looks like this leg. Wow, that's a lot of pieces on this leg. Okay. So, we need number 12. Which is this piece right here. Come on, pop off. There we go. Alrighty. So we're looking at it this way. Let's go from this angle. And go. Come on. Are you serious? Come on, fit in there. I should clean this thing up first. Now it should fit. Okay. Where the hell is it? There we go. Oh my god. Would you just fit? <laughs> you pain in the butt. Okay, I'm gonna make this fit. So, after arguing with this thing for that long, um, I went ahead and got all the pieces together. Um, they took forever and a half. And now I'm just going to go ahead and glue these pieces on. So, yeah. Oh, man. So what faction was the Admech based off of, is my question. Because we know that, like, in 40k lore, a lot of it came from sci-fis at the time. The Tyranids coming from... Oh, wow. Whoops. That is way too far ahead. Oh, whoops. Uh-oh. I need this thing walking. I put the peg in the wrong spot. I am just going to cut off the peg. Here we go. And boop. There. 
Now I can adjust the leg however I feel. And what I'm going to do is go like that, have him in a slightly downward shape so that he looks like he's actually walking. But like, we know the, um, the Necrons are based off of the Terminator, the Alien, the Xenos, um, Xenos, the Eldar were based off of uh, Tolkien's work, the, um, which the Eldar word actually comes from. Um, we know that Tyranids were based off of Alien, but what were the Admec based off of? Like, I am not sure. What the hell is that supposed to connect to? That is supposed to connect behind the leg armor? Uh... I might have put these leg plates on wrong. In fact, I think I did. In fact, I know I did. I definitely, definitely did. That is an oopsie daisy my bad. And I also broke the legs off. Um, we know that the Space Marine, and also keep in mind these are based loosely off of, we know that the Space Marine was based off of Starship Troopers and Alien. Um, that's where the term Space Marine originally comes from is, um, is that. It's popped actually completely out of its socket. There we go. Still make sure that's level. Perfect. But what was the Admech based off of? Is the Admech an original faction? I know the Tau is an original faction. Um, which was later copied by... Wow, I broke this thing in like 700 different spots. Okay. Let's try this again. I think uh, Westwood also copied the idea of the Tau um, from Warhammer 40k and Star uh, StarCraft copied a lot of it off of 40k because they were originally making a 40k game and then GW pulled out at the last minute they kept the assets and changed it to uh, StarCraft. So I went ahead and just put the legs on but I removed the wires it does leave a little bit open, but I made a mistake and that was my bad. Sorry about that. But overall, it doesn't really change the aesthetic of the model itself. So now, I need to flip over to the other portion of this, where they tell you how to build this guy. So we're going to skip past the legs, because I, I messed up on them, and I get that. Legs, 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 body. Okay. So dude guy makes scrub face, he's going to have this head, because this head looks cool. I'm going to look for some body, once you told me, but here we go. Okay. So I think it's a 55 and 56, which should be right next to each other. 56, yes they are. Should also be the only body on this sprue. Oh, but getting back to it. Warhammer 40k has been inspired by, I guess is the correct term to use here, by several other works of fiction, especially around the time of its inception. Its original rule system was loosely based off of D&D, and the original White Dwarf even had D&D just flat out in it, which was kind of cool. Um, I still need the original White Dwarf. Still working on my Codex collection and my White Dwarf collection. Why? Because. Reasons. Okay. We need... That's going to be 59 and 60, so we might as well just get the whole body while we're waiting for it. There we go. While we're waiting for it, while we're looking for it. There we go. Boop. And then for the legs themselves, it's, yeah, 53, 54. Okay. I do think that Adeptus and Mechanicus, um, their, their basic troops are some of the hardest to build simply because they are just a pain in the butt 
to get to fit right. Especially being if you're like me and you like to um, partial assemble and paint, and then just finish the assembly. That could be a real pain in the buttocks. So now we just need to put this guy together. Together. Hey, hey, I said get you together. Here we go. Let's get this leg on. How does this leg go? There we go. Okay. Then we have the other leg. Should sit just like that in a nice sitting posture, which is good. So look at his little keister. So that's the way it's supposed to sit. And then I'm going to let that dry for literally a second. There we go. Okay, perfect. There's a little bit of cleaning up on this model that I'm going to have to do. But he is not going to be glued into position. Um, mostly because I want to take him off and assemble him separately. So now we have to put his arms on. Where are the towel based off of? I know they're based off of like... Nowadays they're based off of the Indian culture. Which I think is really cool. Especially being that their god is Shiva, which again I think is really really cool, and their their entire like caste system is based off of Indian systems, and not communism. We need to stop that dead meme. It's really 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 old and really boring and really stupid. Uh, boop. It's one of the few 40k memes that really won't die. Is that one? And it's actually kind of sad because that one actually drives people away from this hobby. Okay, so those are auto cannons. Where are the las cannons? Cogneous las cannons. That's these ones. Huh, they're like short barreled las cannons. Nice. Almost like mining lasers. I also want a story where, um,. Gene Sila cult rebel against Tyranids. Like, if the wrong hive fleet shows up. Like, you start seeing in their pure strain gene stealers that they're actually like high fleet Kraken and high fleet Leviathan shows up. And it actually gives the Tyranids a little bit more color, as in they don't. Uh, the Tyranids also fight themselves as like competing uh, animals. I personally think that would be really, really, really awesome if they started doing that with the Tyranids. And it would give them a lot more character and make them maybe even able to win a couple of wars because it's not like the entire Hive Fleet works together. I don't know. Maybe I'm just daydreaming and I just want cool stuff for my Tyranids, but I digress. Also, it'd be cool to have like the Dragon Overlord come to the Tyranids. The Doom of Malantai. Because I like the idea that the Tyranids don't share with each other. That they actually secretly work against each other. Wait, I think I grabbed the wrong guns. No, for some reason these have a circle line barrel. Okay. There we go. And then this apparently connects to the top of this. Uh, okay. Like that? Yes, like that. Okay. So there's two pegs on the back of this. And there's two pegs right here. So you need to connect these two, and it's really, really silly in a really bad area. So, let's go ahead and make the best of it, as I messed this part up as well. Did I just not mess it up? That would be a miracle and a half. I didn't mess it up. Oh my god. Nice. Good job, me. High five, me. Yeah, me. Anyway. 
Okay, so that's the gun for the top piece, and then I'm assuming you just connect it like that. Yeah, it looks like you just connect it. Yeah, just right on the back. You don't even really hold it. Okay, that's not a big deal. So I'll go ahead and cut off a few of the little extra pieces right on here. Just make this sit a little bit easier on the gun itself. Yeah, there we go. Sweet. Okay, so now let's put his head on. And we'll do the peg for the backpack. A little power source for his... He's not in power armor. He's in like... I'm just going to keep dropping this. It's almost power armor. I want to say... It's like a, a, a weak version of power armor. Not light power armor, but still not power armor. Oh my god, I hate everything. <laughs> Stay. Peas. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Boom. What else do I need for this thing? Put the head on, put the front pieces on, put the little grabby arms on. Okay. Uh, where are little grabby arms? It's a sick looking auto cannon. Okay, boop, boop, and boop. If you're an Imperial, um, not an Imperial Guard, if you are a Gene Silicold player, I highly suggest you buy one of these, um, strictly to make it into a Sentinel. Um, that way it fits more with like the rusted cog um, Gene Silicolt traits, and you also get like this cool looking auto cannon that you can put on your uh, rock grinder to make it look just that much cooler. Uh, aside from that, what do we need? That little front thingy, which is number 26 and 27. So there's 27 and there's 26. So this piece goes right at the front. Pop that off, and pop this piece off. And we're just about done with this build. Which is good, because I'm going to be late for work doing this. And it goes right to the top, so let's put a little bit of glue on that peg right there. And it sits close to the front. Come on, stay. Good peg. And just to make it stay, let's put a little bit of insta set right at the back. Tilt it back. Crap, I broke it. Hang on. I got this. I'm a pro at building, I promise. And that's how it sits right on the front, which this thing, honestly, it came out pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and say at this point, uh, let me just put these little grabby arms on. Hang on a second. Let's go ahead and put some grabby arms on real quick. Because everybody needs some grabby arms. Take the little Tyrannosaurus arms. They're adorable. They're actually really, really, really adorable. <laughs> He's a little T-Rex. He just needs a, a giant tail and a head over here. Just be like, Rawr. And it's a T-Rex. So put him right up on top. Ah. Ah. I dropped the arm off. Hang on, I got this. I am a pro, I promise. Okay. This sits right here. This sits right here. And just goes just like that. 
Okay, so it didn't hold, but overall, I'm gonna keep these two pieces separate just so I can paint this guy individually. But overall, the Onager Dune Crawler is together. It wasn't that difficult of a build, but it was still like a bit annoying. Um, I'd give it like a six out of 10. It's a fun build. It's a really, really, like I wanna convert this thing. Like I, I desper desperately want to convert one of these things. I wanna buy one of these things for myself and make it into a robotic dinosaur. I'm not gonna lie, I think that would be the best use of this model. Robotic dinosaur. What do you guys think? Do you think I should make a robot dinosaur in the future? If so, um, just comment in the comment section down below. Okay, so with that, th that project is finished. I really, really, really want to get one of my own just to convert it into, I don't know, I wanna put, I wanna put a Carnifex on it. Like, legit, I want to put a Carnifex on top of it. I have a broken Carnifex that is in need of repair, and instead of the legs on that thing, I want to build the legs, put them on the, um, the, um, put the onager's legs on it, make it stand really, really upright, extend its head out, put some more bionics on it, and get some, like, bionic arms of some sort. Uh, maybe even, like, digging into orc arms. Uh, for their Killicans or Death Dreads as a project in the future. Uh, I think that would honestly be really, really, really awesome. Uh, if nothing else, we can actually probably use the uh, the Warglaves arms as part of it. Uh, that might be a little bit easier. Give it a giant chainsaw. <laughs> I think that'd be super, super, super cool. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like it. Uh, for some reason, YouTube's algorithm likes doing that. Also, make sure to comment and subscribe to the channel. All of these things really, really, really help out and they help the channel grow. Also, speaking of channel growth, look at the links in the description down below. There you can find links to all of my social media, including Twitter, Twitch, Facebook. I do a lot on Twitch. I'm live on there every Tuesday through Thursday, uh, 7 to 10 p.m., usually playing 40K related games or just some Overwatch or some other games that I really enjoy. If you have any game suggestions, please pop over to my Twitch, check it out, and leave me a comment there as well. Also, while you're down in the description, please go and make sure you check out my Patreon. Patreon goes a long way to help supporting the channel, keeps my lights on, keeps my belly fed, and it overall makes me happy. It shows that you guys really care about the channel. Anyway, as always, I'm Norn Queen Alexis. I love you guys. Bye.